configure network devices, naming, updating, configuration protocols, and connecting internet. So configuring devices with a network involves a series of steps to ensure that each device operates efficiently, securely, and in coordination with other network components. Devices may be configured through directly accessing the device properties through the operating system menus, as well as through accessing network devices via command prompt, network management software, or using a browser to access a specific device using a designated IP or MAC address. So essentially the way we do access those settings really depends on the type of device and the purpose and what we're actually trying to set up for the network. But there's a variety of ways we can go around things for configuring these settings for our networks, okay? And I'll try to illustrate different ways on each of these different slides too, depending on the different purposes, okay? But look, the first step we'll actually start off with is that of naming a device. So each device on a network should have a unique descriptive name that follows an existing naming convention within an enterprise. So with this naming convention, it should be based on what the device type is, its location within the actual building structure of the enterprise maybe, or perhaps what its function is. And then we actually make a specific name based on those characteristics and features. And the way we order those uh, naming components in the name okay will actually be consistent for then all our devices then so that first part is known as a naming convention so it could be something like the device type is listed first then there's a hyphen its location in the enterprise then there's a hyphen its purpose hyphen and then there might be more of that device within that actual area of the enterprise so we give it a number as well so an example could be printer room a admin and it's printer number one. Okay, and then that is the name of that actual printer. And then there might be another printer in that room and that'll be printer room A admin number two. All right, and as you can see on the right there, I've got a variety of other devices named as well. I've got a switch there, switch office B, sector B number seven. Okay, and then file server, office B, file drive F number three. All right, so they're all following that same consistent convention. So that's the important part of naming a device, that consistency. Okay, it makes it easy to identify different devices on a network, simplifying management, troubleshooting and configuring updates because you can logically see almost just by its name where that device is and what that device is used for. The, the convention actually makes it easier to look at when seeing an overview of the entire network from an administrator's end. With the names as well, it's also important to document them. So keeping a record of all device names and their network addresses, IP and MAC addresses in a centralized location, okay, for easy reference. So somewhere external to the system, it might even be written down or you do have a file set up, okay, that has all the listed technology for your network and has their names there so you can reference them, refer to them and then update them when need be. The next area we'll look at is then, as said, updating a device. Okay, this ensures that the hardware operates efficiently, securely, and in compliance with the latest technological standards. Updates for devices come out uh, quite regularly, whether it be for bug fixes or security patches with for known vulnerabilities. So it is important to update uh, our actual devices. Okay, so we can get those performance upgrades that address these vulnerabilities or add new features or improve those existing functionalities for a device. This process not only extends the life of the device, but also maintains the integrity and reliability of the entire network, supporting a stable and secure IT infrastructure. Okay, so keeping everything up to date means each device is running as efficiently as possible and thus making your network run as efficiently as possible. So in my image here, I've actually just got a sample of Device Manager, which is available through um, Windows operating systems. And here you can just right click on types of devices, whether they're network devices or just any type of input output device, you know, on your system. And then you can actually go update and it'll update the software affiliated with that device to ensure that you've got the most up to date firmware uh, software on your actual hardware installed on your system straight from the manufacturer. So with that being said, the methods are firstly, check the manufacturer's website, regularly visit device manufacturer's website and check for firmware or software updates. Okay. So that involves you going external, but these days often there is like an updated area as said with either device manager or even in your mobile phone, you've got your apps app. Okay. And there you can actually see what software on your system needs an update, including when it is the operating system itself. When you go to settings too, no matter on what system you're using, you'll even get informed that there is an update for your operating system as well. 
So stemming from that, we can update internally from those locations, but then we can also switch on automatic updates. And by doing this, this allows it to happen automatically as the name suggests by doing so it ensures that devices always have the latest security patches and performance improvement and there's no involvement from the humans themselves okay the system will update itself as the updates are pushed out and more common than not that's a great thing because it will automatically update straight from the manufacturer and it will ensure that your devices are running as efficiently as possible because they're always going to be as up to date as possible as soon as the updates come out what we do have to consider as well when updating software within a system for hardware in particular as well, while the update is occurring, it can take certain components out of the actual network because obviously they're being maintained. So we've got to schedule specific maintenance windows when we'll actually do the updates. And you might even see it that you get notified when an automatic update is going to take place that it plans it for the night time, off peak times, okay, times when work's not taking place so that it won't interrupt the workflow of an organization or even your own home workflow. Okay, it does it in off peak time when you're likely not going to be using that technology so that it can be taken out of the equation with mini minimal impact to your operation. So it's important to schedule those maintenance windows at off peak times, not during the day when work is taking place and it's going to bring your network down because that piece of hardware is offline. The next category we will talk about is configuring security protocols. So on a network, we need to have these safeguards in place to protect data integrity, confidentiality, and network access from potential threats and unauthorized access, something we've spoken about many times in this course. This process involves setting up various protective measures, such as firewalls, encryption methods, secure passwords, and access controls. Effective security protocols not only prevent external attacks, but also monitor and manage internal network uh, traffic and detect and mitigate risk promptly. Okay, so it allows us to kind of see what's going on. And then when there's something that's inconsistent and we're seeing fluctuations in data or a user consuming a lot of resources, we know something's up there and it can actually target it from there. So in addressing this, one way you can actually look at uh, your actual technology. Once again, I wanted to show it always from a different angle. And this is uh, the angle of using command prompt. We can put specific commands into our actual command prompt and we can actually assess some of our security features and see what's going on and get some live updates of how the data is going on our network. Some tools we can use to support the security protocols is firstly, changing default credentials. Okay, default usernames and passwords ensuring that they are strong, which means they have a variety of uppercase, lowercase, and symbol style characters used in conjunction with each other, okay, to make strong passwords, but also unique, okay, that the same password can't be used multiple times and they have to, they, are, they can't be reused within the same period, okay, those things allow for strong passwords that are hard for people to guess. This is one of the most critical steps in securing a device. Secondly, enabling encryption using strong encryption protocols for data transmissions, such as WPA3 for wireless devices and HTTPS for web management interfaces. Okay, they encrypt data during transmission when between sender and receiver so that if data is intercepted, it just comes up as scrambled gibberish that can't be understood. We also can use firewalls and antivirus for kind of highlighting when we've got something malicious entering the network. Firewalls checking with their own predetermined rules, the source and destination of where data is going, and then flagging things that don't comply with the rules, and then antivirus software looking for virus signatures uh, that come with files that are known to be malicious and blocking them and putting in quarantine. And then finally, we have access controls for each user on the network. Yes, they have access to the network, but what do they have access to? We can map these permissions to their accounts saying they can view specific files stored on specific drives. Do they have the ability to edit those files? Do they have the ability to share data? All of that can be mapped to as access controls in order to protect data and really limit who sees critical or sensitive data that is stored within an enterprise. The final area we'll talk about is connecting to the internet. Obviously need to establish and manage the way that devices interact and access with the internet when they are on a network. And we want to do this so that we can ensure optimal performance as well as maintain security. So we want the actual experience to be as fluid as possible and you get on the internet and you can search things up easily. 
But as you may very well know, through school or through an enterprise, we need security processes in place. And that might involve you going through a login page and having to obviously enter a proxy server, something like that, because you do need to maintain security as well, because you don't want to open up any vulnerabilities that may come through the internet. So it's twofold, efficiency versus security procedures that all need to be in place to give that really uh, intuitive use of the internet through an enterprise. This can include configurations such as network type selection, IP tree, IP uh, addressing, uh, DNS server specifications, and gateway configurations. Proper setup and ongoing management of these settings enables devices to communicate uh, effectively okay, over the internet and facilitate reliable use of online services. Okay, and businesses need online services. We've already said, you know, the use of SaaS and PaaS and all that. We obviously are uh, accessing external resources to run our actual business. But it's, uh, we want it to be seamless, but we, as I said, we need the security there too. So some steps that can assist with this, and once again, I'm showing some command prompt on the right here, how uh, we can use ping, uh, ping and trace cert uh, and trace root to actually assess how well we are connecting with specific websites and platforms. And they can be tested out through actual command prompt, provided you know the addresses of the sites you want to connect with. But we'll look at some tools here too. And the first one is just configuring network settings. So assigning static IP addresses to configure the, each device to obtain IP addresses dynamically uh, through DHCP or set, uh, setting up DNS settings to ensure that the device can resolve network names uh, to specific IP addresses. This helps establish IP addresses on the network and keeps them working as efficiently as possible with the network you've set up that has all these many different devices on it and allows you to track them and makes it a bit easier to connect and uh, change devices that you have on your network. Also the actual connecting of the physical interfaces. So using the cabling to physically connecting devices. Our ethernet cabling, okay, appropriate to connect your router and switch ports that we plug into them and then we can plug them into devices too. Okay, so that's for the physical setup of the network that we're connecting cable to ports. But then for wireless devices too, configuring the network SSID, that network name and security settings, okay, so that devices can satisfy the proxies that have been set up and then connect to those devices wirelessly and hopefully automatically Okay, without uh, too much trouble each time you reconnect to the network. You should regularly test connectivity using tools like uh, Ping and Traceroute, as said just before, to verify that the device can connect to the internet, check the gateway and DNS configurations, and if there are any connectivity issues. Okay, so seeing that not just that you can connect, but you're getting a good speed too, and your connection is reliable. And then the final point here, and this goes for, probably for all the previous points too, monitor and optimize. Continue to monitor the internet connectivity and performance, adjust configurations as needed to optimize the speed and reliability. All right, it is not just something that we set up and leave alone and neither were all the previous steps too. We monitor, we see how efficient it is and we actually then check, can we do anything better? Can we do an update? Can we change how our network is mapped out? Can we change how all our devices are plugged into each other in order to optimize the workflow? Because we've got to think in these bigger organizations, we've got many devices and many users counting on a strong network connection and then through that getting onto the internet in order to complete work and the more efficient that is, the more work they'll get done and the more productive people will be. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of these four different areas that relate to configuring network devices and really how important that network infrastructure is, the fact that it's set up well and optimized for people completing their tasks within an enterprise in order to have an efficient workflow.